All right, in this tutorial, we're gonna be looking at just the absolute basics of shooting video with our Sony NX5 cameras. So the first thing we need to look at, the most basic thing is just getting set up. So first let's look at the battery port. Uh, when there's a battery in there, we've got a battery release here. Uh, to put the battery in, we've got a couple of these. To put the battery in, uh, sometimes they have an arrow, some of the batteries we have don't, but uh, put it in all the way to the top and then slide it down while you push down. And then to pull it out, you push the battery release and slide the battery up. And then to power the camera on, we just hold down the, the green button here and slide it to the on position. Next, we just need to put in our storage media, your SD card. So uh, the way this uh, goes in is the label should be facing to the right over here and then you just slip it in. The little light goes on to show that you've got an SD card ready. Uh, notice that this uh, camera has two slots for SD cards. To pull, uh, get your card out, just push it in and pull it out. So if you are shooting something really long that's gonna take a couple hours or something, you can put two SD cards in here and it will just automatically switch over to the other one once one is full. Okay, you'll notice when we put this brand new SD card in, the first thing that's gonna happen is it's going to pop up and say that it's not formatted. So when you put a brand new SD card into this, you need to click yes to get it to format. And that will just set up the file folders that the camera needs for storing the video. With that set up, we can just flip this cover closed and we're ready to roll with our SD card. The next thing we need to do is open up the lens hood. Uh, this camera has a, a lens hood to keep the lens safe when it's stored. So this switch over here just flips up and down to open up the lens hood. When you return the camera, please make sure that the lens hood is uh, down, covered, so we keep this lens safe. All right, now let's look at the quick and easy setup for running this camera. If you don't have a lot of experience with this, uh, you don't need to be intimidated by this camera. You can just click this switch to auto and for the most part, it will run itself. You can also set the focus setting between manual and auto. So if, again, if you're brand new to this camera, keeping your focus on auto will be the quick and easy way. So at the front of the camera, we've got three rings here. If you do decide to keep the camera on manual focus, this ring right here is your focus ring. So you can uh, adjust it to get the perfect focus that you need. The second ring here is your zoom in and out ring. And this third one is the iris ring. And if you're running the camera on auto, you don't need to mess with this one at all. So the camera has two record buttons. The first one is on the top here. If you're holding the camera like this, uh, doing a handheld shot, you can use your thumb to use that record button. And then the other record button is here on the back. So if you're using it handheld like this, you can use it there. Or if it's on the tripod, that's often the easiest one to access. So if you've got the camera set to auto, it will for the most part take care of itself. The one thing you do need to worry about is controlling the sound. The camera has two microphone inputs here. Most of the time the shotgun mic that is installed on the camera gets plugged into input number one. To unplug a cord, there are, uh, there's a little knob up here that you can press down. If you press it down while you pull the cord out, you can get it out. This gives you the option of plugging a second microphone in here, maybe a handheld mic or a lapel mic that you clip onto your shirt. You'll need to check on the input settings here. There are three switches here. The first one is line, uh, which is when you're not using a microphone, you're using something that's powered that goes in. We basically never use that. Uh, the next one down is mic for a, a handheld mic usually. The bottom one is a plus 48 volt. Uh, it's a phantom power um, for the microphone and that's for mics that need power, uh, like the shotgun mic that's already installed on this. And again, if you are using this on auto, it probably means you're new to the camera and probably also to microphones. So since you probably won't know whether the microphone needs phantom power or not, I like to just keep these switched all the way down at all times. The last area of the camera that you need to look at when you're dealing with sound is uh, this spot right here. This is where you control the input levels for the microphones. So we can flip that down and this is something that you're gonna wanna check every time you use the camera, even if you're using it in auto. 
So there's two switches here, and that is for uh, two tracks of audio, right and left. So when you bring this into Premiere, uh, you're gonna end up with one track of audio, but it'll have a right and left side. And those can be the same audio, or sometimes they can be from two different mics, and then you can mix those two microphones in Premiere. So the top one is for your uh, left channel, and the bottom one is for your right channel. So they've got different settings you can set it on. If you turn them both all the way uh, to the top, it says internal mic. This camera does have an internal microphone if you don't have a shotgun mic attached. It's not a great microphone, so I typically never use that. Uh, this top one for the left channel, I can switch to input one, and that's basically where I usually keep that. So input one means that I would re be recording from the first input of the microphone inputs, and right now that would be my shotgun mic. On the other side, I've got three options. I can leave it on the internal mic, which again, I never do. I can switch it down so that the, this channel is also recording input one, uh, which so they would both be recording the shotgun mic, or I can switch it down so it's recording input two. That's what I would wanna do if I've got two microphones plugged in at the same time. The next setting here is your audio levels. Again, if you are running this on auto, I would keep these flipped up to auto. The only time you'd wanna switch these down to manual is if you've got a sound person who is keeping an eye on the sound at all times and adjusting the levels accordingly. Let's take a second and look at what you're gonna see on your LCD screen. So uh, since we've got this on auto, you don't need to pay attention to most of these things because that's just showing you what the camera is doing in its auto. So up here, you've got your um, SD card and it shows that you've got 179 minutes. If I plug in two SD cards, it'll show how much time you have on both of those. Over here, you've got your record settings. Right now it's set to 1080p full high definition at 30 frames per second. Up here, you've got your battery power. Uh, it tells you exactly how many minutes you can record, which is very convenient. And then down here, one of the things that even if you're on auto that you wanna keep an eye on is your sound monitor. Right now you can tell that I'm only getting audio from the first channel. And that means that I've got my audio set to uh, record channel one and channel two. So this microphone right here is the shotgun mic that's on the front of this camera. So if you look at that and you realize that you're only getting sound on one side, but you've only got one microphone running, it means you're gonna to wanna to change the sound settings so you get audio on both channels, like this. That looks better. Last, I just wanna take a look at how you would handle this camera. Uh, obviously, it's an expensive camera and it's heavy, so we wanna make sure it doesn't get dropped. So if you're using a tripod, uh, before you move the tripod around, just make sure that the camera is totally secured to the tripod. If you're not using a tripod, there's a couple different ways you can hold it. Obviously, you've got the, the hand grip side over here, and you can use that for handheld. If you're moving around a lot, I find that this ends up leading to a lot of very shaky footage. So usually the way I like to hold it is using the top handle. You end up getting much smoother motion when you're doing a handheld shot this way. The last thing we need to look at uh, for using the Sony NX5 cameras is how to get your files off the camera. So uh, if we plug in our SD card, uh, you would think this would be super simple, but it's not as obvious as, as you would think. So we have to come into the folders. Uh, you just need to like write down this, this series of folders. You go into the private folder, and then that one, and then that one. So at first, it's just the only options you have. But then the last one where there's several options, the one you want to click on is stream. And then you can see all of the videos that you just shot and pull them onto your computer. That easy. Uh, just remember that when you get to this last page, you're not looking at playlist or clips, you're looking at stream. The biggest thing is if you're using this camera, please take care of it. Uh, keep one solid hand on it all the time. Don't lift it up by stupid places. Be smart.